it's David and Brian from VM Blog, and we're here in San Diego. And we're covering the KubeCon uh, Cloud Native 2019 conference, and here's some of the highlights from the show. at KubeCon 2019 in San Diego, and we're visiting with Weaveworks. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the company and what you're showing here at KubeCon? So Weaveworks is, we call ourselves the GitOps company. We coined, the, our founder Alexis coined the term GitOps to talk about storing the model of what you would like to deploy in Git and then having a series of systems automate that into production. And then on the other side, a reconciliation loop so you can see that what is deployed in production matches this model. Uh, we've developed a whole bunch of tooling around that in the Kubernetes ecosystem. We developed GitOps just as a tool that we would use internally to manage our own clusters and our own uh, SaaS product. And then it became the set of tools that uh, we have built a new set of products around the Weave Kubernetes platform. And so speaking of Kubernetes, um, how do you fit into the ecosystem and what specific problems do you solve? So explicitly outside of the scope of Kubernetes is an operations model, a model of how you will operate the software in, in over a software life cycle. And we think that GitOps is the operations model that Kubernetes is missing. And we've built a number of tools to help people automate deployment into Kubernetes and management of Kubernetes clusters via GitOps so that they can have this continuous understanding of what is going on in the cluster versus what they have asked for and an easy audit log tools developers and operators already are comfortable with. It's not a change control platform dictated from the outside, but it's the tools you already like and use. Now, I understand you had a few announcements around the show that maybe you can share with us. Yeah, so we coined the term GitOps and developed a tool called Flux that does GitOps for Kubernetes clusters, an open source project. Uh, there's another popular open source GitOps project called Argo CD. Uh, earlier this week, we announced that those two projects would be merging. Um, and we have announced proof of concept code on both sides for that merger. And would it be possible for us to maybe take a look at the product or get a demo? Absolutely. My colleague Mark uh, from, from WeWorks will be happy to do that for you. Great. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you some features in the new WK, uh, some preview features of WKP version 3.0. Great. So we're starting with the management cluster here that you can view all of the clusters that have been created and managed by Weave Kubernetes platform. Uh, these top three clusters were created here. Uh, the, the, the foundational principles that we have underneath WKP is it's all GitOps based driven. So you're looking at a management UI here for your clusters uh, that is all stored uh, its definitions and configurations in Git. Uh, and what I'm going to show you is some of the functionality that you get for WKP to manage these clusters. So I'm going to start by, uh, if you were to create a new cluster using WKP, you can start by just as simple as uh, creating the Create Cluster button. You can choose the model that you're going to go over, and I'll talk about that in just a second. You choose the provider. Uh, Amazon EKS is the one that we have right now in the, the Preview 3, or version 3 preview version. And at this point, then it would go off and create the cluster. I'm not going to do that here because it takes a, a, a little bit of time to create the cluster. I mentioned models, so instead of letting your different organizations, your business units, or your team stamping out snowflake clusters, we kind of want you to snap out particular clusters that follow a, a well-defined pattern. So what you're going to do is choose one of these models here or create your own. What that's going to allow you to do is for each of your teams, when they need a, cl a cluster, it's going to have a set of defined components that you think are the right things for your Kubernetes cluster. So not a snowflake cluster, but one that you know about and manage. So based on that, if I were to now perform a scaling operation on this WKP uh, Simon cluster, 
I could come over here and manually scale it. This would be, for example, if you weren't using auto scalers in an EKS cluster, you could just issue the scale command here. What's going to happen, I said earlier, was it's fundamentally get ops throughout the system. So if we were to have done that, I'm going to show you what happens underneath the covers. So this is now the dashboard for the management cluster itself. And you'll notice here that we have an open a Git repo. So I mentioned before, the management cluster has a backing Git repo. If we take a look at this, you'll see we've had a lot of demos and commits here. If we take a look at this one, this happens to be the change that you made in the UI to your cluster scale definition. We took it from seven nodes all the way down to three. And that happened underneath there. So the key point is it's repeatable, it's auditable, and all of you get that from using GitOps in WKP. In addition to uh, managing, uh, being a cluster manager, you can manage the individual cluster itself and add some capabilities like creating team workspaces for your individual development teams. So I'm gonna show a quick example of what that looks like. So here I jumped into a different cluster that I launched from WKP, and notice we have a set of team workspaces over here uh, defined here. Before I jump to that though, I wanna show you these components here are a set of components that we've curated together and installed into each of the clusters that, that you see uh, created by WKP. So you get things like Prometheus, Grafana, Tiller, uh, the web UI that is actually running here itself. Now this is a set of cluster components that we think are the right set, but since it's stored in Git, you have the ability to manipulate what components get installed into your different clusters, and the models that I talked about earlier feed into that as well. So if you had a team that came to you and said, we have an application, we want to use GitOps, and we need to run it inside of Kubernetes, what you're going to do is create a workspace for that particular uh, team. What we're doing in this instance, taking your GitHub organization, again, everything's GitOps and backed by Git, and we're going to query out the teams that are exist in there because you're going to tell us this team needs a repo in order to uh, model their microservice application and get it deployed into the Kubernetes cluster. So I'll just pick one of these, and if we take a look at like the Bravo workspace, you'll see that there is a now a Git repo in Git that was created where we match the team to the Git repo to a namespace inside of the cluster. You now hand this over to your team and you tell them, you just uh, commit your manifests here. They can be Helm, they can be straight YAML files, they can be customized. Uh, that goes into your repo. What then happens is all of that gets auto-deployed into that namespace in that cluster for the developers. So no need to set up a CD, separate CD process. You get that GitOps feel uh, straight out of the box. So at this point, that's the, the main demos that we wanted to cover here at uh, KubeCon 2019 North America. And where can they go if they want to find out more information about Weaveworks? So go to the Weaveworks website, which is uh, weave.works.